of you to open up the maroon hymnal in front of you to turn to page 327. Like I say, the last Sunday of the month during the school year, we go over the, Lord, the Lord's uh, teachings called the teachings of the Catechism. We're on the Lord, Sacrament of the Altar or Lord's Supper. Last month we did part one. Part two is in the top left corner of page 327. So I invite you to read that with me. What is the benefit of this eating and drinking? Together, these words given and shed for you for the forgiveness of sins show us that in the sacraments, forgiveness of sins, life and salvation are given us through these words. For where there is forgiveness of sins, there is also life and salvation. Now you can keep it open or close the hymnal there if you want to. I'd like to kind of start our explanation with giving you an analogy today for the Lord's Supper. Picture this. After a hard session of work, perhaps in a field, in your yard, a shop, a hard day at school, or at sports, you need to replenish your bodily strength. So what do you do? You hurry to replenish your body's nutrition with good, solid food that will give you strength to go forward for further living and work. Now, here's the point of comparison. After facing the hard parts of life, you know, all of its trials and struggles to do what's right, temptations that the world throws at us, fulfilling all of your duties in your family and job and community or your sport, our spirits need refreshing too. They need renewing. They need strengthening with the love and power of God. So we come into his presence, what? To be fed with his mercy, with the body and blood of Jesus in the bread and wine of the Lord's Supper, to give us new strength to go on living as God's people. Now that's a fair analogy, except you may have noticed it misses the one most crucial point, the vital thing about the Lord's Supper. It's not just for strength, it is for the forgiveness of our sins, which we desperately need. For in all of our struggles with life, in all of our temptations, we often give in to sin. We do what's selfish, what's greedy, What's driven by pride or by lust? In our anger, what do we do? We sin. And we know that as we said in our confession, we sin against God and against our neighbor. We don't do the good we should do and the evil we shouldn't do, that we find ourselves caught in. What does that mean? We know from the words of scripture, the wages of sin is death, so all of our hard work, no matter how close we come, still deserves condemnation and death. We really have no good thing to come to bring before God to offer him. We have no good deeds, no good works. Really, we don't deserve to come to the Lord's Supper. But that's okay because God is gracious and forgiving and he paid for our sins by that death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, his holy, innocent, willing son who died in our place. Every time we come into church and the Lord's Supper is offered, in a way, Jesus is calling out to sinful people, to us, saying, those who acknowledge their guilt, those who admit that they're weak and unworthy, come, let me give you the free banquet of forgiveness won by my death for you on the cross in your place. Let me give you new life. Let my words in this supper make you new again. I give you myself the very bread of life in the bread and wine as my real body and blood come to you. And I take away your sins all of your sins. That forgiveness makes you free in Jesus Christ, free to rejoice, free to follow, free to be with him forever in this life and in heaven. 
For the living, loving Jesus Christ saves us. It's he who delivered us from everlasting death and the power of the devil. And the Lord's, and the Lord's Supper is one of the ways that Jesus puts that inside each of us personally. It's no good to look at a picture of a beautiful meal because you can't eat the paper. You need to eat the meal. The Lord's Supper isn't just to be thought about, to be contemplated, to be, to be something we observe. This is what Jesus said must come inside of us. His forgiveness inside of our hearts, inside of our souls to give us the power to live with him, in him, and for him to live for Christ more and more in our daily lives. His wisdom, his power, his guidance, all of those things he gives to us along with forgiveness, and we call it salvation. That is, we have a new life, a life that will try to please him. We can't do it perfectly, but we try because we value so much what our Savior did for us when he died and rose in our place. Now, with Jesus' powerful gift of love and forgiveness, we're strengthened and encouraged to do what? Scripture calls it fighting the good fight of faith. That is, to try to resist more and more the lies of this world, the temptations that sound and look good but are traps and snares, and to finally give us the ability to be God's people come what may. We say more often than not, Lord, I want to do it your way and say no to temptation a little more every day. Now, as we come to the Lord's Supper, we have to remember this is not some good work that we offer to God. We have no currency that's spendable in heaven. We can't buy our way in. Nothing we touch is untainted by our imperfection. So it's not that we give God something in the Lord's Supper. He does the work of feeding us, leading us, and sustaining us. Now we all, every human being, needs this gift of grace personally. We need the Lord to take away our sins, to make us new people. We need him, as that skit the kids did showed, we need him to open the way to paradise because by ourselves we can't jump or climb into the glorious heights of God's perfection in heaven. But when God feeds us with his word, with his body and blood and the bread and wine, we are given the very food of life, the forgiveness of our sins as we believe what Jesus said comes to us. I hope you are given health and strength in your physical meals today to do the tasks God has put before you. But I hope God's gift of grace and love in his word and the sacraments nourish your spirits today and keep nourishing you till that wonderful day when we don't banquet at a human altar but feast in paradise with our God and Savior. Amen. And that's our catechism review.